Queens Old Town, a vital entertainment district home to some of the city's best nightclubs and bars, and of course, Chinatown. But that wasn't always so. In fact, Portland was born right here, and the story of its infancy is both dark and sordid. In 1843, on the shores of the Willamette River, two land prospectors so taken by the natural beauty of the area flipped a coin to decide on the name of Portland. Little did they know that the area would become so rowdy, so lawless, so dangerous, that it would earn itself the distinction of the, the forbidden, forbidden city. city. In fact, the very term Skid Row was born right here on Burnside Street. Back in the 1800s, loggers would line this strip with railroad ties or skids and then drag their trees to the Willamette River where ships waited to be loaded. This was also where the loggers lived and thus sprung up flop houses and bars, which then also attracted unsavory scammers, transient workers, and plain old bums. In the old town of today, you'll find hip loft living, art galleries, and new restaurants and cafes opening all the time. But right below these streets lies a dark reminder of the city's past, the Portland Underground, a vast network of tunnels and catacombs employed in the city's notorious Shanghai trade. Back in those days, it was common practice for sea captains of questionable character to pay bar owners and hotel owners money to slip mickeys into the drinks of unsuspecting customers. Knocked unconscious in these Poor unfortunates would be whisked away underground through the Shanghai tunnels to ships waiting at the port and be forced into servitude for years at a time. Hey, uh, you didn't slip a Mickey in this, did you? Old Town remains pretty wild today. On the weekends, it transforms itself into Portland's Saturday market, one of the nation's largest and longest running open air crafts and arts marketplace. Saturday market performers going for how long have you been doing this? 23 years. Do you think they crazy at all here? Oh yeah. In the olden days, Portland had the second largest Chinese population in America after San Francisco. Chinatown's a little smaller now, but it still offers up important landmarks like the House of Louis hung far low. Good for Chinese fair in a somewhat campy setting, as well as this oasis in the center of Old Town, the classical Chinese garden. This is an authentic Suzhou style garden, little change from what you would have found in China during the Ming Dynasty. All my myriad personal problems just seem to melt away sitting here in the exquisite beauty of this, this garden so aptly named Lan Su Yang. The Garden of the Awakening Orchid. Around the turn of the century, with money flowing in from the California gold rush, Portland's fortunes began to change and sadly became a little less sordid. There's still fun to be had here, though. This, in fact, is perhaps the very nexus of the Portland nightlife, with some of the best spots to see music and other entertainment. We've got Dante's, a sort of hipster cafeteria of cocktail lounge culture. Bravati's Pen, which is sort of a middle-of-the-road alternative venue. And around the corner is Valentine's, a small cafe which has great sandwiches and also features experimental music and folk happenings. And there's still plenty of sitting to be done right here at Voodoo Donuts, where the magic is in the hole. They offer delicacies ranging from donuts with maple syrup and bacon to the world-famous cream-filled Cock and balls. No cock and balls. Not yet. My favorite donut is the buttermilk bar because when it's warm and fresh out of the fryer, it's like a gooey stick of sweet butter. Mm. <laughs> oh, yes, it's still sorted in Old Town. 